external signals are converted into responses within the cell. In our bodies, sometimes our cells need to communicate with each other to organize and coordinate events of the body. Now, sometimes cells may have to communicate long distances, maybe from the top cell down to the bottom cell, or it could also be short distances. Either way, whether it's short distance or long distance, our cell is going to use molecules called chemical messengers or signaling molecules to communicate throughout the body. Now, sometimes cells are lucky and they're right next to each other. If two cells are directly next to each other, they can be connected. Animal cells, for example, have gap junctions. Gap junctions are shown in this green channel here where signaling molecules or chemical messengers can can travel directly uh, back and forth between the two cells, cytosols. Uh, this would be found in animal cells. In plant cells, because the cell wall makes it hard to connect the two cytoplasms with gap junctions, plant cells have something called plasmodesmata. Now plasmodesmata are channels that connect two cytosols and plant cells uh, through um, even though they're cell walls. So here these little tiny tunnels, I guess you could say, are the plasmodesmata, and in this picture they're the yellow connections, and now the cytosols of two plant cells um, can freely pass chemical messengers or signaling molecules back and forth. <clears throat> now there's two kinds of signaling. We have local signaling as far as long, as well as long distance signaling. So if we have a signaling cell that needs to communicate with cells nearby, it's going to use something called a local regulator. The local regulator will be released and reach its target cell. Now an example of this might be growth factors. One signaling cell can make growth factors <clears throat> and have an influence on many many cells nearby causing them to grow and divide and reproduce. Uh, the other kind of signaling we'll talk about is long distance signaling. So, in, Or it can also be called endocrine sig signaling because it uses hormones. So, for example, down here in our secreting cell, we have hormones uh, in blue. Now, a secreting cell could be a gland. Um, the hormone is released into the blood, and it's going to be carried through the circulatory system to reach its target cells. Once it gets to its target cell, it will attach to a receptor protein. Or sometimes, if it's a lipid um, hormone, it will just travel right through the cell membrane. Uh, sometimes, some hormones... Uh, They'll pass cells, though, that have no receptors for them, and they just keep on traveling to their target destination. Now, once a hormone attaches to the receptor on the target cell, something's going to happen. Now, what is that something? Uh, that's what we're going to learn in the next section of the book. Uh, but for now, we're going to know that something is transduced or changed inside of the cell. Now, there's three stages of cell signaling that we'll learn. Uh, the, first, the first stage is reception. Here we have a target cell, and on this, in the plasma membrane of the target cell are receptor proteins. Now this receptor protein will receive signaling molecules or chemical messengers that are water soluble or non-polar, I'm sorry, polar uh, molecules that cannot cross through the membrane. And once they attach, uh, they'll cause a series of events to happen. Or we have a um, uh, signaling molecules that maybe are nonpolar or lipids like testosterone for example that can cross right through the membrane and they'll be received inside of the cell. Now uh, the second step then would be transduction. Once the signaling molecule attaches to the um, protein, the receptor protein in the plasma membrane, it causes that protein to change which then will lead to a series of events inside the cell called transduction. Uh, oftentimes it's a signal transduction pathway where um, it's multi-steps all leading to a cellular response. And the cellular response is later on in the chapter. So to sum up, our first step would be reception. There's a signaling molecule shown here in pink that will attach to the plasma membrane receptor protein uh, which will be transduced or changed leading to a signal transduction pathway causing a series of events which all lead to a cellular response. Now the cellular response can be something as simple as rearrangement of the cytoskeleton or um, activation of certain genes in the nucleus to be turned on. Uh, 
So there's many possibilities of what the cell is looking for, all in order to help coordinate um, and organize events inside the body.